Well, good morning. Uh, this is Pastor Jonathan with Robertsdale UMC. You'll notice in the title of this video, it says uh, Monday, March the 8th. Uh, and that is not because I don't know what day it is. Uh, it is actually Tuesday as I'm recording this live video, but uh, I was not with you yesterday. And so uh, I wanted to explain why, and then I wanted to do this video. I will be doing Tuesday's video right after it. And the reason I'm doing these videos separately is to catch up from yesterday. And for those people that come back and watch these later, uh, I know some people that play catch up and watch two or three at a time, uh, or someone may go back and watch this as a series and watch all 39 videos uh, during this Lenten devotion through Mark's Gospel. Uh, so I'm posting these separately. And the reason I wasn't with you yesterday uh, is, is we found out over the weekend that our two-year-old is severely allergic to penicillin. Uh, so after two trips to the emergency room and dealing with that over the weekend, uh, I ended up taking a sick day yesterday so that we could take her to see our pediatrician, uh, make sure we knew exactly what was wrong and that we were doing everything necessary to treat her uh, appropriately. So she's doing much better today. Thank you to all of you who prayed for her and prayed for us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, but again, my name is Pastor Jonathan, and if you're new uh, here, uh, this is the Facebook Live, uh, Facebook page, <laughs> YouTube channel, and website of Robertsdale United Methodist Church. If you are part of our church family, uh, I greet you this morning, and I welcome you, and it is good to be with you in this way. It's always good uh, to just spend some time together with each other and with the Lord. Uh, know that I am praying for you, and thank you so much for your prayers for us. Uh, we've been going through the Gospel of Mark, as I said, and doing kind of a, a Lenten journey. Uh, we're preaching on Mark on Sunday mornings, and so today we actually are looking at a passage that I preached partly on Sunday. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on Mark uh, 7, 24 through 30, because that was the sermon text about the Syrophoenician woman. Uh, but I will name some things that we see in that story as we continue through. And, the, and then we'll go on to um, Jesus healing a man who is deaf and mute. So we see at, uh, it, in the first part of Mark chapter 7, this long discourse in the last video of Jesus talking to the Pharisees and then his own disciples. He actually calls a crowd around him. Uh, this is one of those instances where Jesus, it says, calls a crowd to himself so that he can explain to them uh, something very simple but very powerful and very radical uh, in his day. And that is that of all of the uh, rituals um, and traditions that the elders had to try to keep people ritually clean before the Lord, um, Jesus says it's actually not what goes in from the outside that defiles, but it's what comes out of a person because what comes out of us is from our heart. It's from within. And so what comes out of us reveals the cleanliness or uncleanliness inside. This is actually not uh, a New Testament idea. Uh, the prophet Isaiah uh, uh, mourned at times because of the spiritual condition of Israel, and he would speak on behalf of the Lord, rend your hearts and not your garments. Um, I'm sick of your burnt offerings and your incense uh, and your sacrifices. What I want is, uh, is, uh, is your heart, is a clean heart and, and a right and good heart. And so they were going about the religious rhythms uh, while neglecting things like justice and mercy and taking care of the poor among them uh, and, and all these things. And Jesus even mentions in Mark chapter 7 uh, that you're, you're saying to someone because these things that you would use to take care of your aging parents are dedicated to the Lord that you uh, no longer can use them to take care of your family. So that's the kind of thing Jesus is up against. And in this very next uh, passage in this very next story, Jesus and his disciples leave from there and they go to the area of Tyre. And this is in the southern part of Phoenicia, which is in the region, uh, the Roman province of Syria. So this uh, Syrophoenician woman, and Mark points out that she's a Gentile. Why does he do this? Well, because in the area where Jesus and his disciples are, um, it, is, it is a mostly Gentile area. They've been in a mostly Jewish area that can also have Gentiles. Now they're in a mostly Gentile area that also has Jews. So it's actually really hard. I mean, regardless of, of what, uh, what you may read or hear, um, there's not just a, a clean way to say, oh, well, now he's only with Jews or now he's only with Gentiles, unless the text tells us that. So the text does. It says this woman was a Gentile. She was a Syrophoenician. So she comes to Jesus and her daughter has an impure spirit. And uh, Jesus says, it's not right to take the bread for the children and offer it to the dogs. <laughs> now, if you want a whole long conversation about that, go back and listen to the sermon if you missed it. But what Jesus is basically saying is, I came to feed 
God's children Israel. My first mission is to Israel. But the woman quickly uh, says back to Jesus, yes, but even the dogs uh, eat the crumbs that are left over from the children or that drop from the children's table. Uh, so this woman very quickly shows her humility, uh, also shows her knowledge of who, um, uh, who God is and what his plan is uh, to bless the world through blessing Israel. And because of the goodness of her answer, Jesus says go, uh, and she finds her daughter with, with the unclean spirit gone. So what we see here, and what, we, what I said in the sermon, was we talked about breadcrumbs of grace and how when God shows grace, uh, breadcrumbs fall over and spill even into the lives of other people so that uh, others can just continue to experience the ripple effects of God's grace. Um, God's plan first is to bless the nation of Israel, but through Israel to bless all the nations of the world. And one thing that Mark's gospel is showing us is that the king of the Jews is the savior of the world. You'll also notice that the image of bread comes up in this story, right? Jesus uses that image, and then the woman uh, stays with that image when responding to him, uh, that Jesus is feeding his children bread. Now, in Mark 6, uh, Jesus has already fed 5,000. You remember that? Uh, and they, they pick up 12 basketfuls, and uh, then Jesus walks on the water, and that doesn't seem to be about bread until it says... Uh, the disciples didn't understand why Jesus was able to walk on the water because they, they didn't remember about the loaves. Now, what in the world is that about? Well, I posted a video about that, but it didn't have any sound, so I'll be re-recording and reposting that video. So we've been seeing this image of bread coming up all throughout this part of the gospel. And then uh, the breadcrumbs of grace continue to spill over. Now, some, some will argue that this next story in Mark 7, verses 31 through 37, where Jesus heals a man who's deaf and mute. Some will argue that this man, too, is a Gentile. Uh, Jesus goes from Tyre to Sidon, which is another place uh, mostly of Gentiles. I don't know that we can definitely say that from the story, but he does go to the Decapolis. Uh, the name Decapolis means 10 cities, and it is a mostly Gentile area. So what we see here is that the kingdom of God is already beginning to spill out into Gentile territory, which is awesome. And that's really good news for me because I happen to be a Gentile. Um, and, and even if it wasn't, uh, at the cross, God uh, climaxes what he came to accomplish in Jesus Christ. Um, and then of course in the resurrection. And that does open the floodgates uh, for salvation and blessing to come to the Gentiles as well. But even in these stories, we see the breadcrumbs of grace beginning to spill out uh, over not just into Jewish territory, but now even into Gentile territory. And they bring to him this man who's deaf and can hardly talk, and they, they beg Jesus to place his hand on him. And uh, Jesus puts his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spits and touches the man's tongue. So Jesus uses some of his own spit, touches the man's tongue, looks up to heaven, and with a deep sigh says, uh, Afatha, which means be opened in Aramaic. Um, now, that alone is significant because the magicians uh, would use a uh, certain language to do their little spells. Jesus is speaking in Aramaic, which is the common tongue of his people. So he's showing, you know, this isn't just a magic trick. He's actually commanding this man's body parts, and they're obeying. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. And that language there is like his tongue was tied up uh, and became untied and freed and loosed. And then it says he began to speak plainly. Now, the text says that this man could hardly speak before. He was deaf and he could hardly speak. So it's not just that he has now the physical ability to speak, but that he regains the communicative ability of speech as well. Don't miss that. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, <laughs> but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement, a word we see a lot in Mark. He's done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Now, what's going on in this story? Well, um, all that we've said so far, and maybe observations that you've made that I haven't said, but one more thing that we need to see is that Isaiah chapter 35, verses 5 and 6 say this. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then will the lame leap like a deer and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. That was a very well-known prophecy that was 
uh, about the renewal of Israel after the years of exile. This is what Israel's been waiting on. And Jesus has done a lot of miracles up to this point. I don't know if he's healed any deaf or mute people, but the reason this story is included is to show, again, just another facet of that diamond that is Messiah, that Jesus is being revealed as a Messiah. Not just that he's divine, that that in being the Son of God, he is God, but that he is Messiah. He is that savior figure, that anointed king uh, that was supposed to be prophet, priest, or king, one of those three offices that would come back and restore uh, Israel. Um, by overthrowing this kind of military overthrow of their oppressors uh, and then eventually restore uh, peace not only to Israel but God's sovereignty and a reign of peace over the entire world. And Jesus ends up being prophet, priest, and king as we see. Uh, But in healing this deaf mute, uh, that prophecy is being fulfilled and it's just one more affirmation that who Jesus is is the Messiah uh, that the Jews have been waiting on who indeed ends up being the savior of the entire world. Uh, It also shows me that Jesus has power uh, over the physical, uh, as he did with the multiplying of the food, as he did with walking on the water. Um, But it also, it goes back to what he was saying about that which comes out of a person. Did you notice that? Not, it's not what goes into a person that defiles them or shows them to be righteous, but it's what comes out of a person. And what did Jesus use to heal the man? Well, he put his fingers in his ear and he put spit, he put, he put his own spit, what comes out of him, actually had the power to heal this man. So again, showing who Jesus is from the inside out. Let's see. Uh, secrets and speech, that's also a theme here, just to play on words. You know, he's, he's giving this man the ability to speak. He's opening his ears and loosening his tongue, and yet he's telling the people, uh, don't tell what just happened, which of course they do, and Jesus' reputation begins to spread, and the gospel is going to shift in just a moment, and we're going to enter a new phase of Jesus' ministry where the secret is truly out. His reputation's already been spreading, and there's this grassroots rumbling. Uh, the reason he wants it not to uh, be too loud and too quick is because he needs time. He wants time to accomplish his full mission. And he knows that the quicker the religious authorities find out, the quicker the political threat is exposed, the quicker they're going to do something about it. And indeed, we see them doing that. We see them moving closer and closer uh, to Uh, to trying to put Jesus to death, to trying to arrest him. Uh, And we already see that begin to really explode as he begins to set his sights on Jerusalem. So uh, I hope that this this part of Mark's story has been inspirational in and of itself. And I hope that as we take this journey, you're starting to see how it all fits together. And I hope that God is using it to speak to you on a personal and practical level about who Jesus is uh, and who he is to us and what it means for him to be himself in our lives today on his terms and to do the kinds of things in our lives uh, that Mark's gospel reveals that he came to do. Uh, So God bless you. I'll see you again. I'll really see you again in just a few minutes. But for those watching this, I'll see you in the next video as we look at uh, Mark chapter 8, verses 1 through 21. God bless you. Grace and peace.